welcome back to my channel. Everyone on YouTube says welcome back to my channel. I need to come up with some new material. Maybe next time I'll say something different. Okay, first things first, thank you so much for your support on my chicken coop video, the very first YouTube video that I launched. I was totally overwhelmed by how many of you subscribed in the first week and how many of you liked and commented and sent me texts. I really, really appreciate it. I also got tons of great feedback. I heard you. I'm hoping that as my channel evolves and I evolve, my content will get better. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. My goal is to get a thousand subscribers before my 40th birthday, which is October 12th. I know that that's a lofty goal, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, so in this video, I'm making what I originally planned on making into an outdoor stool to go with the chicken coop. I found that I wanted some place to sit. I was going out and sitting with the chickens all the time and I wanted some place to sit that was cute and portable that I could lift and move to wherever I wanted to sit by them. And so I was like, oh, I'll make an outdoor stool. But once it was finished, I was like, uh, this is really cute and I would totally put this in my house. So you're kind of getting a two for today. It's like a side table and a stool two things. If you stay to the end of the video, you'll see how I used it inside and outside and it's cool. So without further ado, let me show you how I did it. So this pine tree log was sitting in my backyard in a wood pile and when I saw this one in particular, it was begging me to turn it into something awesome. I headed to the store to get the few things I was missing from my shop for the project and of course I was wearing my mask and I washed my hands, don't worry. After a delicious snack consisting of apples and toast, I gathered everything I'd need to build this thing. I took a 2 inch wooden dowel and cut three 17 inch pieces for the legs, a chainsawed 3 inch piece of pine, a sander, a drill and a Forstner bit, an angle guide, three and a half inch dowel screws, wood glue, stain, tape, paint, and spar urethane. Okay, first things first, getting a straight cut on a chainsaw is no easy feat. I did not attempt this part myself. I had an expert make the cut, but even with an expert chainsaw cut, it still was not perfectly level. So I took to sanding a lot. I've seen all sorts of ways to level a slab of pine, but I chose to just sand the heck out of it and leave it a little bit rustic. Next up was prepping the legs. I gave them a rough sanding and then cleared off any sawdust with a blower and some tack cloth. I grabbed my go-to stain and gave it a quick stir. Pro tip, all of the pigment settles at the bottom of a stain can, so make sure you stir the stain really, really well. Don't shake it. I used the color Early American. It's such a great color, guys. I use it all the time. It's not too yellow, not too red. It's just a really fantastic neutral wood tone. This is the moment when I realized that staining the bottom of the legs was a complete waste of time because I planned to cut the legs off later. Good job, Sarah. And this part of the project is what I like to call Sarah meets a new tool for the first time and stares at it a bunch until she figures out how to use it. This is called an angle guide and I used it to help me get a perfect straight angle on the holes where the legs go so that the legs aren't just straight up and down when it's all finished. I've never used one of these things and legit just stared at it until I knew exactly how I was going to go about using it. I knew I needed to secure it to the pine so it wouldn't move around when I was drilling but I really wasn't sure how to go about it. I settled on clamping it but later decided to screw it into the wood itself to keep it steady. I attached my drill and started drilling and oh my lord, it was so much harder than I thought it was going to be. The pine was still a little bit wet from being outside and that just made my job so much more difficult. I should have been more patient and let the wood dry for much longer. But I'm stubborn and impatient and I like to torture myself a little bit so I kept going and going and going. The bit I attached to my drill is called a Forstner bit. I originally was going to use a hole saw, but a hole saw for this project would mean I'd have to chisel out the inside of the hole. Forstner bits are different than hole saws in that they actually drill out the middle of what you're drilling, whereas a hole saw only saws the edges out. I could have also used a standard spade bit, but that would have probably given more tear out or splintering and been less clean. I finished the first one and got my second wind when I saw how stinking cute the legs were going to be. Despite how long it took me to drill these damn holes, a Forstner bit really was the way to go. And 
side, this is where I smarten up and attach the angle guide by screwing it into the pine itself. They even have screw holes on the angle guide itself where the screws should go. <laughs> Come on, Sarah. Oy. It was much steadier. I, however, was not so steady. I could not get the leverage I needed to, so I improvised a little bit just to get a little bit more power behind the drill. I felt like such a wuss here, and I was drilling these dang holes for like a hundred years, but the moment came when all three holes were at the proper depth, and I was very, very happy. I pre-drilled down about an inch and a half so I could screw in the legs that were about to have these three and a half inch dowel screws attached to them. It's super important to find the center of the leg to insert the screw so that the legs can be screwed in properly and be straight. This tool is called a center head and it's used for finding the center point accurately and easily. You line it up and mark the first line, turn the leg a quarter turn, mark the second line, and boom, you have your center point. I attached each leg to my workbench using a clamp and a level so I could get the best chance in making sure the hole I drilled would be straight. There are several ways to do this perfectly, but I chose to just eyeball it as best I could. I then used some vice grips to get a hold of the dowel screw, and then I added some wood glue down the pre-drilled hole, and then I just screwed it in until I felt it stop. I cleaned up the glue spillage with a bit of paper towel, and voila! Table leg. I was truly having a moment here. I felt like I'd worked so hard to get to this point, and I now had a deep and abiding love for these table legs. I was really getting excited to see it come together. I globbed on a bunch of wood glue to the pine where I drilled the leg holes and then started twisting each leg one by one. It took a lot of twisting. This hurt my hands and my pride and it made me question the meaning of life, but after 10 minutes of twisting, these legs were super solid and I had a table. My original plan with the paint was to do like a stripe or a dipped leg sort of look, but after getting a visual using electrical tape, I didn't like it, so I ultimately decided to go a different direction with the paint. I taped off all the areas I didn't want to paint with painter's tape and some plastic, and then I used my trusty flat black Rust-Oleum spray paint that I use for frickin' everything, and I sprayed the bark and edges black. I'm so glad I went with this option versus the painted legs. I think it moderns it up a bit and takes it away from being too farmhousey for my style. I sanded the top once more for good measure just to make sure it was really smooth and then I moved on to leveling the legs and cutting them at the proper angle. I used a piece of scrap wood, laid my pencil flat against it and used that as sort of like a little guide to go around the bottom of the legs. Angled legs really are tricky, and my cuts are definitely not perfect, but after cutting each one with a handsaw and standing it up, I say it looks pretty darn good. The final step was throwing on a clear coat. I used spar urethane and a brush and just did three or four coats. Like I said in the intro, I originally planned to have this be an outdoor stool, and I wanted to make sure it was really well sealed and the weather wasn't going to totally destroy it. Once I got it finished and I saw it styled inside and outside, I really fell in love with it. And here it is all finished. All in all, this was a really easy project to make in a day and I love how it turned out. I think it's a unique little piece of furniture and it really is so versatile. You could make it taller or shorter, it could be a bar stool or a coffee table if you had like a bigger piece of wood you wanted to use. And the cool thing about it is each one is different and it has its own little personality. I love that. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I upload every single Sunday, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you never miss a video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Sunday.